I'm Helene Oberman, Managing Director of Interior Design Magazine, and I'd like to welcome you to Product Tour. This is our series that delves into the products and trends grabbing the industry and in real time looking at the minds behind the design. And today we have Bellwith Keeler, not just any ordinary hardware company, it is steeped in over 125 years of history focused on quality, craftsmanship, and design with a capital D. With me, I like to welcome Nikki Grantham, OEM sales manager and design trend forecaster, and David Warmanhoven, who leads design and innovation for the brand. Thank you guys so much for being here. It's really exciting to have you on today. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having us. So given the established history of the company, you certainly have a unique and well-defined approach to how you design your products. Can you speak about how you've been able to service the furniture industry over the years? And Nikki, I think this is probably for you. Yeah, this is my wheelhouse. Yeah. So we, we started in, you know, the company was founded in Grand Rapids where furniture originated. And um, as things transitioned into North Carolina, of course, we moved and have offices in North Carolina and that's where I'm at um, because that's where the heart of the furniture industry is. So we've been involved in every facet. If you were to look through a history book of design, we've been involved in every facet. We've worked with, with people from Steelcase when they were making the metal desk um, back in the day in Michigan. We've worked with George Nelson's as they were designing mid-century modern and, and redefining that whole um, you know, decade of, of how furniture was made. Uh, to now, the people that we work with in the furniture industry, like Vanguard, Lexington, uh, Stickley, uh, just to name a few, we, we've, we're sought out because of our rich history, because they can come to us and say, hey, I'm looking for something um, mid-century modern, and we can actually go to our archives uh, and pull out something that was actually made in that time period, where other people are, are guessing at what it might look like or doing their research. They're usually using our product as the research to figure out what it was look like. So, I mean, you obviously spoke to, you know, your longevity seems to be based on the flexibility of the company to really be able to pivot to the needs of the market and sort of the trends that you're seeing. And, you know, this certainly stems from you having all these conversations out within the design community. So I know you touched on some of the furniture partners, but some who else are some of the clients that you're really working with? Um, we work with some high-end um, kitchen and bath designers that um, do very looks and um, product. We work with um, some people in the bath industry um, that that sometimes we're not allowed to really say like who we work with, but some of them are some of your um, notable people in the industries. Um, we also work with with companies. Um, back in the day, we used to do stove handles and worked with, with people like Viking doing things and um, helping them with their product. Um, it just really depends on one of the great things we've been able to do as the world shifts and changes, we've also been able to manufacture things that the world needs. So we, we were vital in the war efforts as we would make magazines for machine guns and things like that um, back in, I wanna say the 40s and 50s. So we've done a lot of things that have been um, transitional as the world has changed. The, the thing that we kind of do a little bit differently now than, than how it used to be is that furniture companies would lead the way in, in really what the next new trend would be. We've taken that a step further. So we go to where the trend, actual trend starts from. And usually that's on the runway. Everything is kind of rooted on the runway. So we attend every type of show, textiles, fabrics, furniture, um, I go to several of the runway shows, you know, to see what's the next new. The great thing is you can log on and kind of see what's happening in Europe as far as seeing some of their runway shows that we can't get to. And especially in the, the times that we're in now, that's basically what I've done for six weeks is just log into these seminars and, and attend all of these uh, virtual launches because things are, are changing so differently. Um, but, but we take it to the runway. We look for that little essence of a trend and then we're able because of our relationship with the furniture industry to validate that trend so if we see it on the runway and we see it in the home sector we kind of know the next natural transition is the kitchen and bath um so again we, we kind of uh, follow that path and once we have enough validation that something's not a fad it's an actual trend 
then we have this fantastic, you know, state of the art design team that has such diverse backgrounds and their styles and the things that they draw in, um, their energy from. So you give them a trend or that nugget and then you, you get to see what, you know, different independent designers pull from that. So I think that's where, you know, it's, it's not that there's one creative director saying, here's what you do, here's what you design. It's a nugget and it's really their interpretation. So we, we take it from their interpretation to see what emerges. So you're, you're basically taking all that you, you know, the conversations that you're having, the shows that you're attending and just other sort of fashion magazines, fashion shows. And so you're de deciphering that all. And then you actually put out sort of a qu quarterly trend report, correct? Yes. And so, yeah. So what is this report and basically who are you sharing it with? Um, it's, it's. You know, to start with, what we do is share it with the design team. So I, I compile the information. It's visual. Um, I, what I don't want to do from a, a creative standpoint is I don't want to give someone so much that it, it guides them into what they design. So it's all very visual. It's things from the runway, things from the furniture shows, uh, things that I've seen. A lot of times I watch the red carpet. Some of the best inspiration comes from who's wearing what on the red carpet and what the response is to that. Um, everything goes so fast now you can get something really quickly from there and it's it's developed into some great design um, so it's it's a, a visual report that's given to them there's anywhere between 12 and 15 uh, images that or, or trends that they are given and then they take it and they're swept away to some wonderful little warehouse coolio type place and they do their design thing what we also do is some of our retail customers, some of our higher end showrooms, some of my furniture clients will request a meeting with us. We don't hand them the uh, report over. What I do is go in and I present it. Um, and sometimes I'll have tactile, uh, you know, things that they can touch and feel that help explain that trend. Um, it, what's like I said, what's fantastic is we used to we used to get our inspiration from the furniture industry. You know, now I have furniture people going, hey, when can I get an appointment? I want to see what you got trend-wise, because they're, draw they're trying to find that, uh, you know, that diamond in the rough, that new thing. If you've got 12 different furniture companies subscribing to one big powerhouse trend forecaster, they're all kind of getting the same information. So ours is, is kind of honed in and catered, and it's from a different perspective, and we found that it's been really coveted. Well, it's great that you're sort of leading the design now and leading Absolutely. the and, and it's interesting. So obviously, I mean, you're looking at all styles of trends too, especially when you're gathering, whether it's from fashion or from art or from, you know, the home market. And, you know, you're looking at materiality and you're looking at finish and you're looking at color and you're looking at pattern. It would actually be really interesting to sort of hear from you what you're seeing on the market or we're just seeing maybe the spring that is sort of on trend for the industry? Um, a few things that I've seen that are, are, are on trend. Um, we, we, honestly, the biggest thing on people's mouths right now is, is home office and how things are gonna change. And so there's uh, a lot of the furniture manufacturers that did the, the you know, launches virtually um, kind of shifted and they back some things into October and they kind of went into their home office and thought, how can we make this new, new again? So there's a lot of emphasis around that. A lot of emphasis around um, making the home more um, your castle. You know, this is where people have been for, for um, months now. Um, how do you make it yours? Because someone's sitting around and they're looking at their kitchen cabinets going, you know, I really want to change this. Or I really want to do that. So that's really the trend has been on the, the home. Um, a lot of golds, we're still seeing people kind of going, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my house, I'm looking at my kitchen constantly, I'm really sick of looking at satin nickel. So you're seeing people get a little bit more risky with what kind of finishes that they're willing to put in there. I think they're also seeing this um, emergence of, you know, you only live once. Um, and we, we all learned that very quickly. So, you know, so I don't want to swim upstream like everyone else, you know, I may want to jump to the side and instead of having the satin nickel, hey, I might want to put copper. I might want to go with this gold. 
um, the, and the golds, you know, they keep shifting. We see the shinier kind of brassy color coming back in versus that matte that we've seen for so long. Um, pops of color. I think people looked at their monochromatic palettes and went, yikes, did I do that? <laughs> um, and a great easy way is to add that pop of color. Um, we've got a collection that we launched called Bella Claire that has uh, like a clear acrylic um area and in that clear acrylic what we had was uh the ability to highlight whatever pop of color it was that they were putting instead of locking somebody in and saying here's your your you know cabinet hardware and it's bright blue and, and you're stuck with it no one's gonna kind of want to live in that palette for a really long time especially the generation of homeowners we have now um so with that clear, they can paint those cabinets a bright blue. They can paint those cabinets red, and you just you, you don't have anything fighting with it. You kind of you kind of emphasize it versus fighting with it. Um, another great thing we, you know we have is the ability to accelerate to market. So another collection that we have out that's called the Color it Collection. Um, I was inspired when I went into Christopher Guy's showroom. He built a showroom here in um, High Point. It's the first freestanding building we had in over ten years built. Um, so it was kind of from a furniture perspective, we saw a great shift to this market coming back and, and buildings being built downtown High Point. Um, so when you went in, it was like a two, it was an open story or open two story wall that he had mirror pieces placed together in this pattern. And it looked like this, like someone took a mirror and just busted it and it just landed in different places. Um, and that's called cullet. I, you know, I took pictures, I came back, I threw a report together and I sent it off and, and I said, guys, I was like, I really think there's something here. Um, they looked at it. There were several, several different designs. And then the one that we, we landed on has this great color pattern on the side. So in the profile, when you're looking at your cabinetry, um, there's a recess and you can see a different texture uh, in the recess and that color pattern kind of pops out. We are still seeing Baker just had a virtual launch and they had a little table called Pierce Side Table. And it was this great little tea table side uh, table that had this Pierce pattern. So four years later, we'll still seeing it. Yeah, no, it'll be interesting. And, and actually, I want to take that as a sort of jumping off point to like maybe um, get David in. So David, I would love to find out how you're sort of translating all these trends. So like Nikki's bringing to you um, and how do you sort of take this information about like, here's the color trend that, that Nikki's seeing and sort of adapt that into the product designs that you're creating. And really what is the collaborative process like for the two of you and for your teams together? Yeah, so one of the first things we do is when we get um, a trend report from Nikki is we go into what we call our war room, which is basically stand-up desks, um, whiteboards everywhere, markers, paper, um, pens, and tape and cardboard. <laughs> so not only do we sketch these things, um, we mock up prototypes, we have 3D printers, but we try to really think openly at this point. We don't want to think about so much uh, manufacturing or draft or can this thing be made? We're thinking like really open. Um, we are a company that will be 130 years old. Um, we're known for a lot of metal pieces and metal work, but we always like to incorporate new things and new materials, new processes. So a lot of the things like Nikki will bring to us you might think like fashion, how does that have to do with a metal pole or a pattern on some clothing, but we actually interpret that um, in different ways. It might be the actual texture of the fabric. I mean, if you zoom in to a piece of fabric and start looking at textures and the way things are sewn and stitched, um, that might become a texture. One of our groups, that we just launched, I mean, the texture, not only was it a historic piece from the 60s, um, Sandrine is the collection, um, it's got a texture that's pretty modern. So some of the things Nikki brought to the table, we might even combine, we might combine our history with an element, which in Sandrine's case was broken concrete, um, the texture of that and all the little um, granules when you break a piece of concrete versus the smooth underbody 
that you would uh, feel with your hands. Um, a lot of combining, experimenting, failing, um, moving forward and synthesizing her ideas. Um, so we think really broad, we think really open. Then we present those back to Nikki, um, people within work. Um, Nikki talked about validation. We might even reach out to designers and say, hey, A, B, C, D, which one do you like? You know, and get comments, get feedback. So when I talk about a lot of failures to get to a good product, they're not really failures, they're validation points. Um, we found that the more input we get, there's a lot of good input um, in the US, even regionally, things make a difference. So um, not only is it about the design, it might be about the finish, it might be about the region in the US. So we get a lot, a lot of inputs. Um, Nikki is the start though. And we do a lot of shows with Nikki. So we're always taking pictures. And until you get back and start to accumulate your pictures, sometimes you don't always notice a trend right up front. But then all of a sudden you're amassing these pictures and grouping them by page. And that's even another validation. Sometimes we'll try to beat Nikki a little bit to a trend report. We'll quick do one right after a show and then we'll release at the same time she does and see what kind of crossover there is. So, so there's no competition, right? No, <laughs> no not at all. But, not at all. But it, but it is interesting. I mean, so David, for you, I mean, certainly there's the trends and everything that you're seeing, but it, you know, it's interesting because you say you can like tap into your archives. Like, where are you, like, where are you as the designer? Where are you digging to sort of find all this inspiration? I, I'm digging everywhere and it's not just eight to five. So, I, you know, I carry a sketchbook everywhere. Um, even in meetings, I might lose attention in the meeting, but um, I'm always doodling and sketching. And I know there's uh, four of us in design. Um, the fifth is part-time. So we do actually have five people on board. Um, you know, we're always thinking of ideas. When we're out in the world, we're seeing things. Um, going to shows. Um, when we do travel to a trade show, we always try to pick up other things in that city. Um, we might go around and look at architectural elements. We might go to an art show. Um, Fashion week happens to be during, uh, I think it's New York now or ICFF. So we usually try to hit that as well. So we try to see a lot of things and take a lot of pictures, absorb the whole culture you know, part of what we do, you know, we make cabinet hardware and we call it the jewelry for your cabinets. But in the reality, we also want to be a part of that environment. So we want to fit into that environment. And so, like Nikki said, we study who are the players out there. I mean, we get inspired by plumbing, lighting. Um, we talk with stain companies that are working on the next uh, color schemes two years out. So we're, lo we're looking far ahead. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of having an internal design team. Um, you know, as a designer, I've been with the company 15 years. And before that, I've done other design jobs, mostly product design. And sometimes you're hired to go in to do something. It might be design a toaster. I have no idea what a toaster is really, except that it makes toast. So I'm not an expert in that. And I feel like having a team of people at the company with the right tools and even our backgrounds are so varied, it only adds to the whole picture. Um, it's a benefit to us and the company that we're on board and we are the experts in what we do. So, you know, from design to manufacturing, um, we look at all aspects. I'm curious to know, David, and even for you, Nikki, I mean, because you guys as a company for Bell with Keeler, I mean, you have the custom work that you're obviously doing with your furniture partners, correct? But then you're also sort of designing your own standalone collection. I mean, is are the approaches to designing like similar or are you like have a different sort of hat on when you're like, okay, this is my custom design work and this is my like Bell with Keeler work? I think they're, I think they're, uh, they're similar, but they're different. You know, the, the, you've got to have these several kind of 
uh, stage gates, I think, in a process when you're doing a custom piece for someone um, versus when you're doing it for mainstream or, or for the masses. What might be on a custom piece is, is a finish that is, is kind of locked into the cabinet or the furniture suit or, um, you know, if you're working with somebody who's doing a high-end kitchen and they want specifics that match certain appliances from a finish perspective or profile, you know, those things will be great. But when you put it through the stage gate process, is it going to hit all of these other notes for showroom customers or a retail situation? It may not. So I think you do have to kind of wear two scopes. Uh, one thing that we kind of enjoy with our custom is that um, it's really our testing ground uh, because you're not, from a company standpoint, you're not committing to quantities and, and inventory that you're going to have to make sure kind of moves through and, and marketed correctly. Uh, it's their product that we're designing for them. Um, sometimes they have the nugget. Some, some people can literally take off an earring and pass it across the, you know, the table and say, here's the finish I want it to look like. Um, while we know that's a great finish for what that particular customer customer wants, it might not work for uh, the general population. So I think you do have to kind of have these different kind of processes. Uh, we get to be a little um, fun and crazy. And that's again, when Dave talks about the mixed materials, a lot of times we get to pull in um, a, a texture or a process, you know, we've got one uh, customer now that I'm working with in an OEM perspective where we even, considered, you know, some thermal imagery and things like that on, on parts, you know, mainstream is not quite ready, but we can test the ground for a custom item. Uh, and that, that, that's kind of the fun part, you know, of this job. Uh, and again, they, they cover our um, trend forecast and they, 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 our ability to make product better than most other people, you know, that's why we're sought out. So. Um, it, it, you kind of touched on it, Nikki. I, I was curious, especially given the current climate in the world, I, I, I definitely feel like challenging times can lead to innovation. And I'm just wondering for both you and for David on the design side, you know, are you guys looking during this time to sort of explore new technologies or processes or even capabilities for your products that are really aligned with what's happening in the world right now? Ab absolutely. And I'll let David speak a little bit further on it. But one of the things that we did like as a company when we were all dispersed to our homes um, is we, we sat in on every possible roundtable design meeting that we could. We all took notes. We all got together, put our heads together and sent documents back and forth. Here's the ideas. Here's what we saw. Here's the things that are coming. You know, for us even having a retail channel, you know, I sat in on a lot of retail conferences because the way the consumer is going to shop is going to change. So we had to start thinking about that from that perspective is, you know, it's a, we're a tactile industry. They want to touch and feel that piece of hardware. How's that going to change? People are going to be more sensitive to cleanability. How is that going to change? Um, so there, there were a lot of things that we took from it and have already started, you know, working with finishing, you know, how, how do we make this finish cleanability different? You know, what industry can we pull from to see what they're going to do? Do we go into the medical field to see how they use, you know, what finishes and procedures and blah, blah, blah. So we've, we've really went down many avenues and Dave can speak a little bit more about some of the things from the technical standpoint that they're working on that, that they've seen from, from the shift. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Nikki nailed it. And, you know, part of, Part of the pandemic, I think, is bringing out a lot of uh, innovation and just ways of thinking. So, you know, I'll be spearheading innovation as a as a separate department, kind of outside of the hardware. So it may be in the hardware, but we're also looking at a lot of new products um, getting into uh, our manufacturing is capable of pretty much producing whatever we can design. So. And I think that's true in the world today. Like if you can design it, everything's so advanced, you can pretty well make it or start to build it and get it made. So that's kind of a nice thing. But when we talk about innovation, we're not only talking about products. Um, one of the things we hope to spearhead is as a company, especially in the hardware industry in our market, um, innovation to us is not only the product, but it's the customer service. Can we do things different? Um, Nikki mentioned shopability. 
are we doing our best at that? What can we do different? So we're going to be looking at things. I mean, even packaging, some of the products we're getting into, uh, poles that are longer, um, possibly bath products, you know, electronic door systems, um, all these things that come with it, not only the product, but you have the packaging, you have the ink, you have the shipping, how much space does it take? These are all gonna play in innovation. So we're looking at how people live today, how things are changing, um, what products will they need? Um, we're doing a lot of human centered design, uh, a lot of studies on people, um, what's out there, what works and what doesn't. So I think it's gonna be a big driver for sure. Well, I think as a company, I mean, if you look at the 125 years, you know, you've weathered the storm through a lot of global issues. I mean, whether it's, you know, a world war or, you know, a depression or a recession or a pandemic. And you've obviously have been able to sort of pivot and adapt. And, and, and David, you were speaking about it, like it doesn't always have to be a door handle, right? It can be a machine gun, you know, or something else or in looking towards what the future is. And I mean, have you guys, obviously, David, you did speak about it, but forecasting really what is the future of the company and products moving forward? Yeah, I mean, we talk about it all the time. We're not a huge company by size. I mean, we're under 500 people, so we do fit that small company um, model. But the beauty of that is we can go in and talk to the president at any time. And so everyone is on board with what is happening. Um, we're constantly, our owner is a very creative person, so he is as well scheming up ideas um, and he owns other companies too that also support us so he's got a, a company that we can you know utilize for any engineering or electronic type stuff and um, so we have a lot of good resources um, and we're open to new ideas because we are small there's not a lot of tiers to go through to get approvals and which allows us to move fast. I know we talked about too, uh, Nikki talked a lot about the differences between OEM, retail and showroom. Those are like our three biggies. Um, and there's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences too. And one way that we stand out as a company is our ability to move quickly. So because we have in-house design, we have uh, trend people, we can create it, we can tool it, and we can produce it and distribute it really quick. And that's my that's the, the appeal I have. I've had other design jobs where it might be a two year uh, process. Um, at Bellwith, it's much, much quicker than that. And that's I find that attractive to be able to move, produce, see the results, go to the next thing, and always be on top of it. And I think that's why uh, Bell with Keeler is a trend leader too, because we're always coming out um, with the next new thing. We have a lot of patents right now and patents cover you for quite a few years, but um, you don't want to police patents at the same time. We do it, but um, our way of staying on top is to always be coming out with the next new thing. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of companies do that. I mean, instead of looking back, you just have to sort of move forward, but you know, you guys are a small, maybe, but definitely mighty company. And, you know, it's really great to sort of get all the insight about how you approach design, how you approach trends, you know, the collaborative process that really, it seems very at the heart of who you are, both, you know, internally between Nikki and David and your art teams. And of course, all the great partners and collaborators you have from the outside in the design community overall. But, you know, thank you so much both for your time. I really appreciate it. I know our audience are. And for all of you out there, please definitely check out Bell with Keeler and all the amazing things that they're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.